Hey folks, what is an HVAC technician's starting salary? That's what we're gonna talk about here on Fox Family Heating, Air, and Solar today. If this is your first time watching, please click subscribe down below and click that little bell right next to it. You'll be notified of all of our upcoming videos. First thing you need to know about the trades is if you have a great personality, you look sharp, you're clean cut, you come to work on time, you have dependable transportation to and from work, uh, you're not drinking alcohol on the job, you're not smoking weed on the job, probably are gonna do a pretty good job in this field. It's a job that you're gonna be fit doing because you're gonna be doing a lot of carrying, lifting, squatting, climbing, and crawling. So uh, that, that will definitely keep you in shape throughout your career. It's also a job that is never the same day by day, and that's what I really seem to like about it the most, is that the US Bureau of Labor Statistics has said that the HVAC industry is actually gonna increase 15% by the year 2026. At the same time, there's a major shortage of blue collar workers ready to fill those positions. Why is that? Is it because since day one, our parents have been telling us that if we wanna get a job or have a good career, we're gonna to have to go to college and get a degree? I think that might be it actually. Since my childhood in the 80s, I've definitely seen an increase in white collar jobs and those jobs most likely need a degree to get those positions. I get it. <clears throat> However, I think the baby boomer generation and generation X has been making the push for that kind of thinking in their children. A mindset that almost has completely forgotten that we still need to flush toilets, turn on the heater, maybe fix our appliances, or run pipes for a sprinkler system. All of those are jobs that don't require a college degree. Not only does it not require a college degree, but you won't have crazy tuition to pay off either when you do finally get a job. Skilled trades are acquired. They're handed down from generation to generation. In my opinion, HVAC techs learn the best with on-the-job training. Nothing substitutes learning out in the field. Now, one thing you need to keep in mind about HVAC technicians is that there's so many jobs available out there, but warehouses need workers to deliver the, that equipment to the workers out in the field. They also need people working at the front desk to get them supplies and parts and equipment when they come back uh, to try to make repairs on, on equipment. And those guys at the desk really know their equipment because they see so much and they see so many parts for their particular brand. It's pretty amazing how knowledgeable those guys are. You name an HVAC brand and there's probably a warehouse around your area that carries not only that equipment but the parts for it as well. And if you're gonna go work in a warehouse like that, one of the distribution warehouses, you're probably gonna start off around $10, $15 an hour, I would suppose. I have never had a job in that field, but, um, but I can't imagine you're gonna be making more than the technicians out in the field. In California, we have HVAC technicians who act as a third-party verification. Um, so we, anytime we do an installation, uh, we have to comply with Title 24. Uh, so there's a third party that comes out and does all the verification for our installs. They verify uh, not only that the system has enough return error, but the refrigeration system is properly charged and that there is less than 15% leakage in the duct system. So um, these guys, they make good money, they're out in the field, they make uh, you know kind of like a base pay and then they also make uh, like, a, like a certain amount, a chunk of money per job that they do. Now the Title 24 HERS Raiders in my area, they drive a lot. I mean, I, I listen to these guys, they're driving Northern California down to Central California. It's really crazy, I, I feel bad for them. They, they drive a lot, they have long, long days in the, in the busy season uh, and pretty short days in the slow season because their jobs are based around, you know, like um, inspecting current installations. So if the business is slow, then probably their business is slow too. Another HVAC job is in home performance. Here, uh, technicians deal with the, with the home and try to get their existing homes to perform better for the customers who live there. By sealing up their gaps and uh, penetrations that might be in the attic and stuff like that, uh, through the floor or the attic, uh, basically trying to seal that up so that the house is tighter, so that they can run uh, smaller systems in the house, uh, so that there's less waste and energy and uh, et cetera, et cetera. But uh, these technicians are, you know, kind of salesy. Um, they, uh, they go out there and they try to sell a concept. Uh, a lot of it has to do with like fenestration or windows, um, sealing up houses, ductwork, insulation, things that are basically gonna seal, the nut, seal up that house, tighten it up, 
But um, yeah, good industry to get into, good good part of the industry to get into. It just wasn't my bag of tea. So I've already told you guys this, but when I first started out in the industry, I was uh, a bartender who had been working for 15 years um, serving drinks. And uh, I got to about the age of 35 before I decided to make a career change. But I was making pretty good money right about then. I was making right around 75,000 a year just bartending four days a week. <laughs> but um, But for me, it was time to move up to a real job. You know, you can only hang out in certain jobs for so so long. Bartending for sure is a crazy atmosphere. Uh, you have to be uh, on it every single night and be on your best game. And by the time I was 35, I was just kind of over it. So uh, I really didn't care what I stooped down to. I was ready to reinvent myself and uh, come back up into the game. Because I was a mechanic in the Air Force, I already knew that I had an inclination for the mechanical field. So when I heard that uh, this big company in town uh, had a job opening, I jumped on it. I, so I found a job here in town with one of the big companies. And the great thing about working for the big companies is that we had steady work. Every day I was installing equipment, every single day. It was grueling, but it was, I learned so much very fast by, by constantly installing new equipment every single day. So we were working really hard, but we weren't sitting at home sitting on our butts either. In 2010, my first year of HVAC, they offered me a job and I accepted it for $10 an hour. But I knew if I did do that, if I showed them my work ethic, if I showed them who I am, that I knew that I would move up in the ranks pretty, pretty fast. And that is the way it is in the HVAC field. So I got my EPA certificate, my 410 certificate uh, from this company and um, my, that company gave me a $2 raise. So I, after one month, I was already up to $12 an hour. Um, a couple months later, after showing them my hard work ethic and them noticing um, things about me, they gave me another $2 a raise. So now I'm up to $14 an hour after about, probably about three months of work. Um, so that was nice. Um, and to do that, I mean, I was, you know, not only showing up to work on time, but I was getting my jobs done quick. I wasn't just hanging around, powwow, shooting the shit with guys. I'm focused when I get on my work. I get there, I'm kind of nerdy, I do my thing, I want to get it done very quickly, and I want to move on. That's me. And that is how you will move ahead in this field. I was working in the install department. I was at $16 an hour after about nine or 10 months. Um, so you can see how quickly we moved up. Um, but in my head, naturally, I started thinking that I wanted to move over to the service side. Well, my install manager wasn't having that. Instead, she offered me a position as a lead installer. So I would be running my own jobs. I was the foreman on my own jobs. And basically, I was responsible for every job that we were doing now. So I basically just did that for another year. So now I'm making $18 an hour after just a one year of showing them what I can do. I eventually worked up to $20 an hour as a lead installer and I think I might have gotten up to 21 before I finally said I got to go to I want to go to service. So after 2 years of installing, I was I wanted to go to service. And just a little little tidbit about that, I had been asking my my install manager for 6 months to get me a job over in service and she would never let me do it. She just kept saying, uh, yeah, if if spots opens up, I'll definitely get you uh, over there. I'll let you know. And uh, finally, I went over to the service department manager and asked her. I didn't really know her very well, um, but um, I didn't know her at all. So it, you know, it takes a little courage to um, step up and ask, but I went over to her and I said, hey, um, are there any positions available in the service side? I was, uh, I've been interested for the last uh, several months and um, my manager keeps telling me that if a spot opens up that she will get me in. Um, is there any spots open or are there any spots open? And She's like, yeah, absolutely. I got a spot open for you. I'll get the transfer paperwork over to her and we'll get you over here as soon as possible. Uh. <laughs> so I mentioned that just for a little bit of experience because it drew, I, that, I had to drag that on for six months and it really stunk. When I did get moved over to the service side, I was at $21 an hour. I had to take a pay cut of $7 and go all the way back to $14 an hour. So. I had to do that because um, I didn't have any service experience. I had to once again prove myself, start myself at the bottom, work my way up. I eventually did get back up to, like, uh, by th after about three years in service, so two years in install, three years in service, I was finally back up to about $20 an hour. But 
Um, after that, I just decided to go on my own because it's great to work for big companies because of the business, but this particular company had a ceiling, a pay ceiling of $25 an hour. So I knew that no matter how long I stayed here, there was only so much I was gonna be able to do um, as far as you know compensation. So I pretty much started looking at um, other options, which became me starting my own business. But uh, take my technicians, for example. They make $20 to $27 an hour, but they have opportunities to make extra money throughout the day selling like add-ons that might help a system last longer or be safer for their families. They also sell complete systems when they're out in the field. If a system is sold by one of those techs, they get 6% of the sale. And our techs love that big payday when it hits. And now with us installing solar, our sales tickets are getting much bigger and that 6% equals a lot more money. We currently have a technician who's getting ready to propose a $78,000 solar job that has over 30 kW worth of solar panels. That's like 61 panels on there. Uh, but uh, could you imagine the commission off of that job when you get it? It's, uh, it's like over $4,600. And you know, so that's just my story. So many technicians before and after me will have so different stories of how they got into the HVAC field. Some people will have fathers who lured them into the field um, to carry on the family business. Some people like me uh, were just looking to reinvent themselves and start all over um, and found HVAC as the savior. And their salaries were probably a little bit higher, honestly, guys, because me starting off at $10 an hour, I was asking some of the other guys that I worked with, how much did those guys start you off at? $10 an hour. So they, um, I mean, they all worked themselves uh, up towards around the $20 range. But um, once again, they knew that there was like a ceiling there at 25 that uh, they had to kind of get out of there. I know technicians who started out working for the state at $18 an hour. But, the, but for the most part, HVAC apprentices start off around the $15, $16 an hour mark. On a national scale, the salaries, the highest salaries for um, HVAC te seasoned HVAC technicians out there in the field are the District of Columbia at $32 an hour, Alaska, Hawaii, Illinois, and Connecticut are right at the $30 an hour mark. The state with the highest number of, of openings for HVAC technicians and installers are Florida, California, Texas, New York, and Arizona. If you are coming into this field green, you may need to start at the bottom and work your way up. This is the best way to do it anyways because then you learn how that company wants to do it. That company gets to teach you their way and you're not bringing in some, some bad habits from another company. Once again, it's called the trades and it's a learning process. And guys, I wanted to throw this out there too. I've never been on the union side, so I don't really know much about it. So I don't, I don't like talking about stuff that I don't really know anything about. Union guys starting out with a lot more money. In fact, uh, one, one of the first instances where I thought, man, I'm gonna move. <laughs> I'm gonna get out of this job and go find somebody who will pay me the right amount of money uh, was when I went to a um, customer's house of mine, uh, fixed their AC, and they told me about their union job. And um, he was telling me about it and how he was making like $30, $40 an hour and then their time and a half and all that stuff. Um, but uh, he said the only really drawback from that was the, the union dues, um, the large amount of union dues and stuff like that that, um, that they have to pay for. Um, but he said he is rolling and, and has been rolling uh, you know, since he started uh, working for the union. So I don't know much about the union. That's why I don't talk about it. This is non-union stuff <laughs> that we're talking about. So if you do want to find out about union and how much those guys pay, uh, you know, just check it out. Just say starting salary for Union HVAC and you'll be able to find the answer right there. Well, good luck guys and stay with your dreams. I told you guys about the lack of techs in the field and the lack of blue collar workers out there in the field because I want you to be armed when you go uh, and negotiate your pay. You guys are worth the money. We work hard out there. We sweat, we get dirt all up in ourselves and we get, I mean, it is crazy the, the amount of work we're doing for, you know, 10, 12, 15, 16, 18, you know, really, uh, it's, it, it is what it is and it's what you're happy working for is ultimately what it is. HVAC is a great career. It's a, uh, it's a, it's something that cannot be outsourced. And, and that feels good knowing that my job is secure. We're always going to need heating and air conditioning. 
I mean, there are always people out there who will work for less, but it's a rarity to find somebody who wants to work as hard as an HVAC technician. If you are new to this channel, please click subscribe down below and just click that little bell right next to it and you'll be notified of all of our upcoming videos. Check us out on Facebook at Fox Family Heating, Air Conditioning and Solar. And if you would, just share this video with one aspiring HVAC technician who might need to know how much they're gonna make out in the field. Thanks so much for watching guys and we'll see you on the next video. You're watching Fox Family Heating and Air Conditioning. Don't forget to subscribe and check out more of our videos by clicking on the right side of the screen.